Amy Edmondson studies these things at Harvard, author of The Fearless Organization, Creating Psychological Safety in the Workplace for Learning, Innovation, and Growth. Uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you, Professor. Uh, are you surprised by how the employees feel and that they feel safe enough to be able to say this stuff publicly? Well, to what extent are they really saying it publicly? They're, they're responding to surveys. They're, they're filling out um, a request for their opinion. I don't think that's very hard to do. I don't think that's, I don't think that's terribly risky to do. So no, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Are you surprised though how, and I'll use the word entitled, employees now feel <laughs> to speak publicly? I, mean, I, I just can't imagine in the days that Jack Welch was building GE, you'd get employees mouthing off about who the new CEO would be. Well, this has been a slow and steady tendency to in 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 the i guess in inviting and listening to voice and people have been expressing their opinions um either you know pr privately behind closed doors forever since the beginning of time expressing them publicly is a relatively new thing because everybody has a microphone everybody can jump on their twitter account twitter should know that better than anyone right yeah. And, and, and say what they think. So no, again, we shouldn't be surprised by this. Yeah. I think the aspiration is to listen, right? To see whether there's any gems that are entitled. I mean, yes, and these are educated knowledge workers who believe themselves to have not only the right to speak. But the responsibility, um, I guess. But the responsibility yeah. do, 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 do Gen Zers though not, in maybe this, there's a softness here, right, that, that begins to encroach in, that uh, they're so used to being happy and being coddled that when the rubber really meets the road, we're kind of doing them a disservice because you think about workers at the other extreme, say in China, who are working for companies that don't allow this, it, if you're spending all the time in yoga sessions and with everybody doing counseling because Elon Musk is ready to buy you out, that all of a sudden, and you think about the other employees' benefits, uh, Massages, fine, but uh, concerts, beer bash is fine. On-site acupuncture, fine. But the, the sort of the level of, gee, we want everyone to feel comfortable with what our company's doing versus we want everyone to work hard for the bottom line so our shareholders make money and our employees get bonuses. Here's the worry. There is a, and almost, I must call it a toxic individualism, where people have become so interested in their own desires and wants and certainly uh, many policies have encouraged that tendency that they lose track of the collective right? they lose track of the mission of the organization so if they have an opinion about what will work about strategy about what makes sense what doesn't i think we want to hear it if they have an opinion about their own needs and wants and desires and think those should be met at all times that's problematic so when we have a trade-off of the here and now for the future yeah. and the me for the us then we have a problem right then, then we then we yeah. have a situation where the company may be at risk yeah toxic individualism i absolutely love it how much as we look at the board of twitter right where you've got people who own meaningless amounts of shares making decisions that affect the shareholders that own a lot elon musk 9.2 percent uh, Vanguard, Morgan Stanley, BlackRock, obviously, are mutual funds. But then you look at the board ownership, it's absolutely meaningless. They work for the board, and they're out of hand rejecting a 38% premium on the stock. Jack Dorsey's leaving. He's the only one who has any skin in the game. Is there a toxic individualism among members of boards who are put there for uh, social goals rather than for economic goals? could be and and for sure there's a there's a here and now problem right there's a there's a very serious failure to think strategically about what the long term might look like and where what value twitter is set up to create for its shareholders yeah. in the in the rush to figuring out what i want right now toxic individualism it is a uh, i had not thought of putting it that succinctly. You uh, summed it up in two words. Fascinating. Professor, thank you. Um, I feel like the toxicity and the individualism is going to continue to grow, which means we'll be calling you back, all right? <laughs> all right. Yeah, thank you.
Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.